flight controllers here in the Payload Operations Integration Center are busy at work this morning. They've been working with Karen Nyberg from the Kibo module discussing Melfi operations. That's the station's minus 80 degree freezer that's used to store biological samples, among other things. In the meantime, Chris Cassidy has been having a little fun, all in the name of science. He's been working with a new investigation called Surface Telerobotics. That's where he actually gets to control a robot on the ground from the space station. I spoke with the payload developer about these operations. What we're looking at is ways for uh, humans to control robots um, in you know different situations, primarily to to aid in exploration. So uh, the other projects uh, within human exploration telerobotics are Robonaut 2, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard about, and uh, smartphone spheres, which is we've taken a smartphone and put it on the side of the spheres facility, which also very many people are familiar with, um, to uh, basically make it a, a robot, a free-flying robot, and give it a little more uh, computational power and some additional sensors that aren't already on board the spheres. Uh, surface telerobotics is a, um, what we're trying to do is have crew on board space station control a robot on the surface of Earth. And this is a simulation of um, different types of uh, missions that you could run. Uh, say uh, in orbiting vehicle around Mars, controlling a robot on the surface of Mars, or a um, crew vehicle at the lunar Earth uh, Lagrange point on the far side of the moon, controlling a robot on the far side of the moon, which we cannot communicate without orbital uh, assets in place because we have no line of sight. Um, so what we're testing is, you know, what do we need technology-wise in order to do this sort of mission because we've never done anything like it before. And so we need to understand calm issues, um, usability issues, um, uh, situational awareness. So we're looking at our user interfaces. You know, do they give the crew the information that they need in order to understand what the robot's doing, what's, what's its uh, status, uh, and then can they control it? So what kind of hardware are we talking about? Are we talking about a little robot down here on Earth? Yes, we are. <laughs> we're talking about um, a MER-sized robot. So those are the, uh, the last two rovers that were on Mars. The newer robot, Curiosity, is quite a bit larger. Um, so it's about a meter by a meter by a meter <laughs> robot called K10 that we have at Ames Research Center. We've been using for about five or six years now. Um, so we're very experienced using it. So we didn't... We didn't want to have too many new variables in this experiment. We're, we're running off of um, our experiences uh, doing uh, analog missions uh, where we've gone out to the Arctic and you know California, place, deserts in California um, and Arizona where we've tested the robot and done simulated uh, science missions. So we want to keep the, sort of the robotic side of this test as, you know, uh, as familiar as possible and really look more at sort of the human factor side, look at the crew inter inter uh, interaction with the robot. That's really where our science is in this case. Uh, robots are fun, I mean, for everybody, uh, you know, and astronauts have as much fun with it as anybody else. So um, they're neat because you can sort of, it, they move around, they do things, and you can kind of relate to them. For the, How the exciting is it for you to see a project come to fruition like this? It's great. I, you know, I, I haven't had much experience on the, on the human spaceflight side of NASA's house, but we've mostly worked. You play with robots. I play with robots, <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, we've worked sort of with the Mars program in the past. We've looked at, um, we have looked at robots uh, to aid human exploration, but we haven't actually flown anything with human space flight before. So, um, so even though we're not, our project's not flying any hardware, we're only flying software because we only need to send the GUI up to the station for, for the uh, crew to control the hardware on the ground. Right. Um, there's still a lot of things you have to do to make sure that everything's safe, surprisingly, even with software. Um, so it, for me, it's a very new experience, and it's, it's really exciting because, yeah, I can say I've flown something now, so uh, I really like it. It's fun. And for more information on surface telerobotics and other investigations, go to nasa.gov station.